<laughs> Thank you for the sound effects, Michelle. Yes, for, so for this week's main topic, we are continuing our What If series, kind of imagining what happened if some of the attractions, the shows, whatever it might be from different Disney destinations around the world kind of found their way into other parks, especially parks within the United States. So Walt Disney World, Disneyland, what attractions would we like to sh- come there? And where would do we think they would fit in? Yeah, or, like on another timeline or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. As we go through the, the Disney multiverse, <laughs> That's you know, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, so, and then we've gone through a few different areas. We've gone through, you know, what happens with the States, you know, if we were to shift parks from Disneyland to Walt Disney World and vice right. versa. We've done uh, Shanghai, mm-hmm. what, you know, what if that came to the United States parks. Uh, and today we're visiting what, Michelle? We're visiting Tokyo. Yes. So it will be what if Tokyo Disney Resort attractions came to the U.S. parks? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm excited. So we're not going to do a top five list because, let's be face it, actually a lot of these attractions, they're, they're almost carbon copies in some of these uh, you know, as to what you can find in the U.S. parks. You right. know, some slight differences, but a lot of it is if you look down the list of attractions at the Tokyo Disney Resort, you'll see a lot of stuff that will look very <laughs> familiar to you. Um, but there are some interesting things. So we're going to kind of read, go through our maybe our top three or just list mm-hmm. uh, three different attractions. I, I did attractions. I don't know what you did. Yeah, I did attractions. I also have some fun facts about the Tokyo Disneyland. Oh, good. To because share. Just I, a few. I, I, looking forward to hearing that. <laughs> uh, so we'll see where we think those attractions would fit into the United States Disney Parks, Disneyland, Walt Disney World, uh, and you know what park? Disney California Adventure Park, Disneyland right. Park, Hollywood Studios. Animal Kingdom? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so uh, go ahead. Why don't you give us some of the fun facts about Tokyo Disney Resort to kind of get us started, oh, Michelle. Okay. All right. Uh, so when the park first opened in 1983, um, it was comprised of 114 acres, making it the largest Disneyland style park ever attempted at that time. Um, however, the parking lot was not so large. In fact, it was pretty relatively small in comparison. Uh, in fact, the smallest built for Disney theme park at that time. Do you know why? Why? Because of the popularity of Japan's public transportation, oh. which is now still the favored way to get to the parks. Oh, I love, I love trains. I love the European trains. Right. Um, we've never been to Asia, but the trains there look fantastic. Yeah. More trains in the U.S., please. <laughs> I know, please. I know. Um, the, uh, and I have one other fun fact, and that was because there was not a Liberty Square or New Orleans Square at Tokyo Disneyland, this was the first time and the only time that the Haunted Mansion was actually placed in Fantasyland. Hmm, that's an interesting point. Yeah. yeah. So there uh, you go. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Cool fun facts. Michelle always has the best <laughs> fun facts. All right. So let's get to a We'll go through our what if Tokyo Disney Resort attractions came to the U.S. parks. Uh, where are you starting, Michelle? What attraction are you going to first and where are you putting it? Okay. Uh, I would start with the Monsters, Inc. Ride and Go Seek. Mm. Okay. And this is an attraction where the... The guests are going through Monstropolis and they're kind of doing a a hide and seek uh, to find hidden monsters throughout the attraction. So when the Imagineers decided to do this attraction, they they wanted to uh, do a dark ride format but they wanted to find fun ways that the guests could actually interact and become a part of the story. And also something that would have an appeal for people to want to come back and do it more than just once. So uh, what they did was uh, they landed on this flashlight tag system. Now it doesn't keep score like Buzz Lightyear, but it does help the the guests riding find hidden monsters. And then something happens when they do flash their light on these hidden monsters. So the guest is a part of the story and they're, they're finding things. Um, and they, in order to make it realistic, so the guests could also feel immersive, um, you know, they, they mimicked a lot of the sets and scenes from the original, uh, 
Monsters, Inc. movie. So like they had streets running through the towns and, and they needed tall buildings. So this attraction actually has building sets in there that are as tall as some of the buildings on Main Street, USA in Disneyland, California. Wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty big. Yeah. Um, so the way that the story goes on this ride is that it takes place right after the initial movie ended. So they've discovered the benefits of laugh power. And in fact, when you see the building, it, it has like what we've come to know and love on the, the new series on Disney Plus, Monsters at Work. It's the laughter we're after mm. logo on the front of the building. And, and it's just adorable. Um, obviously, the Imagineers always try to fill attractions with special details and Easter eggs. And that's, there was no exception to this attraction. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll, here's a little fun fact here. They have a clock in the locker room scene and it's permanently set to 1028 PM. And that is a tribute to the film's premiere of October 28th, 2001. <laughs> and of course there's a disappearing Randall that guests can try to find and some hidden Mickeys. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just, it looks like a really cool little dark ride. Um, but I do like the fact that things are reacting when you do spot them and tag them with your flashlight. Um, and the, the reality of it looks r is so cool, you know, that you do feel like you're in that whole city of Monstropolis. And I think the best place to put this obviously would be over at Disney California Adventure Park since they, you know, have Pixar Pier and that whole area devoted to Pixar. I think might, it would fit in there. fit into that new Disneyland forward area. Yeah. You know, as they, you well, know, that's true too. To, yeah. You know, uh, I don't know exactly. I'm sure we're going to get some more details on that here in about a month. Right. Um, but uh, maybe it might fit into that spot. So, I mean, uh, they already do have a, a Monsters, Inc. attraction at Disney California Adventure Park. Mm -hmm. um, Mike and Sully to the rescue. Right. Um, it's kind of misplaced. It's kind of almost a forgotten attraction, right. although sometimes the lines are longer than you'd expect, but, um, it's kind of just, it's kind of hidden out of the way. Yeah. I mean, this could possibly replace it there. Yeah. Although I think having I, it I in agree with Pixar you. I think I, I'd rather, since that's a Pixar area, move mm -hmm. it over there. And, uh, Monsters, Inc. is a movie that is close to our hearts. It's the first Disney slash Pixar film right. that we saw together as a couple in yep. the theaters. Uh, so yeah, it, it's going to have a special place for us. So that's great. Good yeah. choice. Thank you. And Michelle is way more detailed than I'm going to be on any of <laughs> I know that's not shocking <laughs> to anyone out there. Um, but she's going to be, she's going to have one, the more interesting list. You're going to basically, you can just predict my list right now. I'm telling you right now, you'll be able to predict my list. Um, but she will have much more detail involved. I'm, I'm just going to kind of name them and talk a little bit about it and tell you where I'm going to put them. I'm not going to have all that fun facts like she has. So. Well, you're sweet. I, you know, I, I should have prefaced at the beginning of my list. I, I kind of knew there were certain areas that you were going to be gravitating to. So I kind of left them out there for you anyway. So, uh, uh, Let's hear your first yeah, one. <laughs> okay, like I said, you can look at the list and you're going to pick out that one, that one, that one. Those are going to be the ones I that are on, figured, you know, yeah. on Tom's list. There's, there's one we might both have, but we'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Because, well, I am a Disney princess at heart. <laughs> Maybe if not a legitimate one, I am one at heart. So I'm going to tell you right now that also all of mine are <laughs> Disney princess related. Just oh, okay. So, in. yeah, we may have another one that's the okay. same, but it might be different than I expected. Well, I'm going to start with the enchanted tale of Beauty and the Beast. Now, you may have seen a lot about this just a few years ago when they were first discussing this coming um, because they put out a lot of video and it was a lot about, you know, how amazing the audio animatronics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. were. Uh, you're, you know, and it was the first time we saw these really super advanced animatronics we're right. starting to see them now we're like tiana's bayou adventure has right. a similar animatronics uh involved with that uh but this was that first one where you're like wow that's crazy they've just taken them yeah. to the next level it's and all by the way that is on my list okay there you go uh, it's also a trackless attraction so it's kind of you know think of uh, mickey and minnie's runaway railway right. or rise of the resistance it's that kind of thing only you're in teacups going around rather than a train car or mm -hmm. you know some sort of uh, car trying to escape uh, from a star destroyer um and 
I, I see it as a perfect fit, of course, in Magic Kingdom, mm -hmm. in Fantasy Land, in Magic Kingdom. I think that it, you know, I, I, I can see it fitting in Disneyland too, except for I just don't feel like there's the room in Fantasy Land to put it there, where I feel like they could right. make the room. Uh, at, at Magic Kingdom to place it. I think that, yeah, I mean, it's great that you have Be Our Guest and Enchanted uh, and Tales, uh, what is of it? Bell. Enchanted Tales of Bell, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, that we, while we haven't been to that attraction, we've heard nothing but great things and we do want to do it yeah, at some point. Yeah, we've been to the restaurant. Yeah, and we've been to Be Our Guest. Um, but I feel like Beauty and Beast is such a great movie and such a beloved film mm -hmm. that it could it, it, it deserves even more uh, within that park, so I think it should it would go perfectly right in kind of that space over there. Um, and it would just be it would be a it would be an e ticket attraction right. immediately for sure. Um, I, I I it's one of those attractions. One I can't wait for when we can finally get to Tokyo Disney Resort right. to experience it. Um, but just the fact that Beauty and the Beast may be people who know I hashtag real men love frozen mm -hmm. are going to be sad to hear this, but it may be my favorite Disney animated film of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I could agree with you. Um, yeah. And, and that it made my list also, um, you know, you mentioned teacups. So what it is, is the, it's not like the mad tea party teacups. These are actually pretty large. They have two rows. Uh, the first row sits four people and the back row sits five. And like you said, trackless. So your, your, your teacup and saucer are, are like gliding along, like waltzing. You know, again, I think you gave a good, um, correlation with the Mickey and Minnie's runaway. If you think of like when Daisy Duck has right, dancing, you know, it's not all that, but it's, it's kind of like that concept. And you're going through the different scenes of the, the film and, you know, and just like you said, really spectacular audio animatronics and the room where the plates and dishes, it's just crazy. Yeah. Crazy good. Uh, it looks spectacular i mean just from day one when they first showed us some of those mm -hmm. animatronics you're just like wow this is next level and yeah. everything about it looks next level and just it, it would be a wonderful addition to any disney park right. but especially i think Fantasyland, magic kingdom totally makes sense well yeah i think it kind of goes well with the where you know that you have be our guest mm -hmm. restaurant there as well you know it kind of that's the castle i'm sure you could they could have a secret way that you get in differently or whatever but you feel like you're still going in yep, the castle agreed. so, so yeah. that was my pick um is that one of your picks too, that or? is one of my picks okay i guess i'll go again then yes sorry for that that's all right I'm sorry people i'm gonna go again <laughs> Well, as we all know, hashtag real men love frozen, but you may also know that hashtag real men love tangled yes. as well. So as I we knew mentioned, this one, I knew this, this is going to be a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Disney princess. I'm predictable. <laughs> yes. I'm a predictable Disney princess at heart. Uh, so there's a couple new attractions in the new fantasy Springs area that, I mean, literally just opened up just mm -hmm. a few weeks ago uh, out there and they are amazing. They're They've taken attractions and areas. I'm going to say right now, look, just take Dis uh, Tokyo Disney Sea and just plop that right. in Disneyland and plop that <laughs> at, at um, somewhere in Walt Disney World and you'd be good. Yes. You'd be good. Um, but even Fantasy Springs would fit perfectly in one of these areas. But uh, Rapunzel's Lantern Festival um, just looks gorgeous. And who doesn't love a good, nice, quiet, romantic dark ride that's a boat ride in <laughs> that's Disney. Right, yeah. I mean, they're just so good. Uh, here's the description of that attraction from straight from the website. It says, this attraction takes guests on a romantic boat ride that leads to the annual Lantern Festival where the where they experience Rapunzel's best day ever as she falls in love with Flynn Rider. I think it's actually Eugene. And actually, I think it's also more that Eugene falls in love with Rapunzel. Um, right. But okay. And visits <laughs> various locations from the film. And it looks stunning, wonderful. The lantern scene is great. Gorgeous. I mean, I know we haven't experienced the attraction, but we have seen the Tangled show on Disney Cruise Line. Yes. And the lantern scene in that, like it brought 
like weeping tears yes. to me. And I have no doubt this attraction would probably do the same thing because I love that scene so very dearly. And I think this looks wonderful. And just that whole land, again, this whole little area within Fantasy Springs, that space with the tower and you can see Rapunzel up in it and everything. It just looks gorgeous. And I'll throw in, just put the Snuggly Duckling restaurant in there too, <laughs> and right next to it. Look, this... This could go right into Disneyland forward. I think it would be a great yeah. space on the Disneyland side um, if they wanted to add it there. But also, and more importantly, I think it needs to go into Magic Kingdom. I mean, the fact that we have only Tangled bathrooms, it's, it's Tangled <laughs> is so <laughs> underserved, as good as that film yes. is. It's so underserved in the parks. It needs to go somewhere. I love it in Magic Kingdom, but I think Disneyland Forward probably is the most likely and best place for yeah, it. Yeah, makes sense for sure. Especially since I'm already putting uh, Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast in Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I can't just completely redo Magic Kingdom. Uh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. All right. So do you, you only have one more? I only have one more. Okay. I, but I have a couple of things I'll bring up after okay. you're done because I'm kind of surprised mm -hmm. at one or two things. But anyways, uh, my next one uh, in that same land is the new Peter Pan's mm -hmm. Neverland Adventure. Mm -hmm. That almost made my list. I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. Now, this is different than the Peter Pan attractions that we're used to already. This is different. It's an actual adventure. Uh, in fact, the premise is that the guests are uh, actually brought into the fold of being the lost with the lost kids and going on an adventure with Peter Pan and Tinkerbell uh, to save John from Captain Hook and his pirates. Um, so first of all, I wanted to mention the queue is incredible. It's really long, um, but I'm sure that makes sense because it's a popular it's new, it's, it's, you know, high tech and everything like that. So it, having a lot of area for people to be indoors and comfortable, no matter what the weather is like outside, but you're actually like in forest. I mean, there's full grown trees there, a lot of them too, not just mm -hmm. one or two. It's just really impressive. Um, from there, you go into a little pre-show before you board a boat. And of course, once you're on the boat, what do you get? It's some pixie dust by Tinkerbell mm -hmm. so that you can actually soar into this 3D uh, ride experience. Um, it, it kind of sort of compares a little bit. If you think of the Avatar attraction at Animal Kingdom, you know, some of the imagery that you feel like you're moving you know, forwards, backwards, and sideways, but you're really obviously not, but you're not sitting in a car like that or on a motorcycle or whatever that is, or I guess you're really riding a banshee, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of think of that kind of imagery, but you're looking at it in a th with 3D glasses, you know, in, in a boat. Um, and your boat actually can turn to different scenes to really help you focus on that part of the story. Um, another attraction I think I'd compare it to is like the King Kong 3D at Universal, mm. you know, so you feel at times like you're moving when you're not mm -hmm. necessarily. You're not? <laughs> That's the magic what? of Disney. I know. But still really, really cool. Um, and since I, as I mentioned, since it's not a replacement for the original, um, I think this one would be good at Disney Hollywood Studios. Mm. Uh, and maybe put it over my launch bay or something like that. <laughs> Anything. Like, like, all right, we love Star Wars. Yeah. And, well, you know, the character meet and greets are great in the launch bay. But man, there's something needs to go over there yeah. besides the launch right, bay. Right, right. So, I mean, I think that could be an attraction that would, you know, definitely fit over there. Mm. So. I want I want the whole land, like build the whole land that they have out there, the big pirate ship, yeah. all that stuff. Right, I, right. I want it all because yeah. uh, it looks again, Fantasy Springs, Tokyo Disney Sea, gorgeous, <laughs> wonderful. No notes. It looks spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, very good. All right, so we're at your third. Well. You already know. What I it is. already you know. Everybody already knows what it is. Hashtag Real Men Love Frozen, of course. <laughs> so. It's got to be Anna and Elsa's frozen adventure what? <laughs> and the whole area of Arendelle there that they've put up. I mean, yeah. What? Like that is so, that area is amazing. And what they've done with this attraction, it's, it's, it's taking frozen ever after and, and, and making, putting it to the next level. Right. Like it's on steroids. It's, spectacular uh guess here's how the description is from the website guests board a boat again 
Lava Boat Attraction That's right. with Disney and experience the world from the Disney animation film Frozen. Here they can enjoy the epic and heartwarming adventure of two sisters whose love for each other saves the kingdom of Arendelle from eternal winter accompanied by the original film's well-known songs. That doesn't do it justice if you've seen right. any of the videos or photos from this attraction. It has these updated animatronics that we have been talking about already that look amazing, mm-hmm. fluid, wonderful. And then these projections that make some of this magic happen yeah. around. It's just gorgeous, wonderful, spectacular. Of course, you know, the great music from Frozen. Right. Everything about it. That whole area, if you see, you know, the Arendelle Castle and everything, like, we need all of that. <laughs> we need it. It's got to go in Disneyland Forward. They need it at Disneyland Forward. Yeah. And we already have some Frozen stuff going on at Walt Disney World. Right. I'm okay if they want to put it there, too. Yes. Um, but I think it needs to be in Disneyland Forward. They need a little bit more Frozen interaction right, at Disneyland. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Very cool. Um, but the whole thing, I mean, every bit about that, um, about these attractions, and especially Tokyo Disney Sea. I mean, if they, if they are going to tell me at D twenty three coming up here that they're going to do another a fifth gate, and they're just <laughs> going to say, hey, you know what? We're just going to do basically a carbon copy of uh, Tokyo Disney Sea. I'd be like, good, I'm in, hundred percent, because uh, that place looks amazingly spectacular right yeah in fact um we actually had some special guests talk about disney sea Mm -hmm. not too long ago that's episode 284 which is exploring disney sea um and we had some some relatives that had actually gone over there and that was before fantasy springs opened so they didn't get to experience right right aspect of it but a lot of the other stuff that was there exactly exactly um which made me actually a little surprised that you didn't have on your list journey to the center of the earth i was going to bring it up that that was uh their favorite i think of the attractions there so you know so as for people who've actually experienced them um that that was their I'm number one. So that had to be at least an honorable mention. Right, there. right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, and so again, let's discuss more in that episode. Yeah. Um, check that out there. Uh, did you have any honorable mentions? Um, I think you just listed it for there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, um, I, 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 look, I put it all out there. I mean, yeah. I, I love it all. Um, I think it's so great. I don't know. What did you have anything else more? Well, the other one that, kind of made my list at the beginning then I took it off because again I knew you'd do the frozen and tangled for sure uh, and I and I thought you were going to do the the journey to the center of the core to the core what is it journey, journey to, to the, the center, center of the earth, the earth. Yeah. um I so I kind of thought you were going to go with those I, I thought the 20,000 leagues yeah under the that's sea the other one yeah would be an honorable mention that would be kind of fun to have I mean it it isn't a replica of what was at um, Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom when they opened the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea there. This one does, you're still in a submarine, although albeit much smaller. It has like six seats, three on each side facing outward, looking through portholes, like, but giant portholes. Mm-hmm. Um And you have, you know, some of the elements of Jules Verne type of feel to it. Uh, I just, I think some of the interesting aspects of it is, um, so you're kind of going through thinking of like the original Peter Pan f- flight mm-hmm. attraction where you're kind of suspended uh, going through the, the, the ride system that way. And you're not really underwater, but it does definitely give you the feel and look. Impression, of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think the fact that they're, you're not underwater there, I think they do a good job of trying to make it seem real. Make you feel like, just like yeah. in Star Tours where you really feel like you're flying through mm, space. Right. Like yeah. This. Yeah. So I thought that was worthy of an honorable mention. Very good. So. Yeah. Now there's a lot of stuff. Um, we really, we really, really, really want to get to the, uh, to the Asian parks and, uh, yes, uh, the Tokyo Disney Resort is possibly atop that list. I um, mean, we'll see another reason why here coming up soon as I get to the Disney stories of the week, mm-hmm. why that may even be more so right. within a few years. Yeah. Um, but it, all this stuff looks great. I mean, you know, the funny thing about it is, you know, I, I, we've looked at like Shanghai Disney and like that, it, it feels Disney, but it doesn't feel like what you expect from Disney. This, because they went 
so much of a carbon copy of mm-hmm. a lot of what you see when you go to the Disney parks, especially the Disneyland park there. Um, it has that. It's going to still hit from what I, I would look like to me. You're going to have all the interesting new stuff that you've never experienced before, but still feel like you're within your favorite Disney park, whether it be Magic Kingdom or whether it be Disneyland, essentially. Yeah. Um, and actually, I guess kind of made, reminded me of a couple other fun facts. Uh, one that I, I posted on social media, and that is the um, Jungle Cruise attraction, which they obviously <laughs> mimicked from Disney actually goes in a different direction. It goes clockwise. That's right. I remember I remember we had that I think we did a, an episode about boat um, attractions mm-hmm. and something I think that fact came up in that at some point. We we've, we've discussed that 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 was the one attraction that goes the or maybe it was just on the Jungle Cruise. I remember we did yeah, an episode we, where we were just discussing something about it and that that fact came up. I'm sure it was something that you dig up, dug up in your <laughs> amazing research pieces, but I remember uh, that that was the difference in that one. Is that's the only one that goes the opposite way. Right, right. You know, and the other thing is that the attractions um, at uh, Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland Resort are like a mirror image of, the mm-hmm. set up at Fantasyland and everything mm-hmm. of what you see at the Disney parks. Here, right. So. so you kind of get that, you know, that nostalgic feel. Right. But with all this other cool new stuff, and especially, like I said, you can go get that Disneyland, that Magic Kingdom mm-hmm. feel within their Disneyland park, but then go over to Tokyo Disney Sea and, you know, still get that Disney experience with something totally different right. and unique and fantastic. And, um, yeah, and yeah. if you like boats like you do, there's a lot of different other uh, experiences that you can take other than attractions, but like they have the Disney Sea Transit oh, Steamliner. Right. They have so many boat uh, yeah. transportations, especially at Tokyo Disney Sea. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and other, like they have the uh, electric railway. Mm-hmm. So a lot of cool things too, in addition to the attractions. Yep. I mean, I guess those are also attractions, but. We'll see. It's on the list of things we want to do in the future. And mm-hmm. so we'll see when that happens. But yeah, definitely can't wait to check it out uh, for sure. We'd love to know what you think about what attractions would you like to see come over from the Tokyo Disney Resort and put them within some of the U.S. parks. What attractions? Where would they go? Share them with us. We'd like to know. And uh, What's our next what if that we're going to be doing? Do you remember which park we're hitting next? Is it Hong Kong maybe? I think it's Hong Kong, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think, we, I think we've just about gone through them all. I Hong Kong so. I think is our last one. Right. So start building up for that. We'll do that in a few weeks. Um, our what if uh, yeah. series continues on. But that is our what if the Tokyo Disney Resort attractions came to the U.S. parks.